Uh, I'd like to say a little bit more about, uh, about active listening in treating substance abuse in the context of our series on addiction and recovery. My work uh, with those in recovery over the years in counseling uh, has been focused primarily on two topics. One is, uh, in fact I've introduced it this way, is that we're here today to talk about emotions and we're here today to talk about your relationships. And uh, oftentimes we don't discuss substance per se. It's looking at emotions and relationship as they feed into substance abuse. I don't believe I've ever had a client in all these years who denied having problems in their significant relationships in the context of working on addiction and recovery. Um, oftentimes uh, relationship issues around feeling heard, which brings us to this topic of active listening. Recently had a conversation with someone who said, what are some of the triggers for uh, substance abuse? And, and uh, it led us to a conversation about not only substance abuse and addiction, but also what are called process addictions. Process addictions can be uh, behaviors such as sex addiction, gambling. I even want to include in this uh, a broader perspective, looking at compulsive thinking as an addiction. I think that's probably endemic in society. It's rarely looked at as an addiction, but it may be our primary addiction actually. Um, but what are, the, what are the drivers or the triggers for these kinds of addictions? It led me to reflect on genetics and environment. If you look at double-blind twin studies, it's clear that genetics play a significant factor in, in addiction. You can take two twins that have been separated from birth and compare them later in terms of uh, any number of behaviors, including addiction, and find there to be a pretty hefty correlation uh, uh, between their genetics and their later addictive behavior. However, it's not completely determined by that because you can take those two same twins, imagine putting one in a facilitative nurturing environment, putting another one in a neglectful, abandoning, even abusive environment, one will be addicted and the other won't. And so you've got to address the factor of nurture or environment as well. I see therapy and counseling as addressing the nurture problem, the environmental problem, namely of addressing trauma and neglect, uh, both developmentally as well as in the present. The way this manifests is that somebody that's grown up in a neglectful environment is likely to reproduce that in their current environment, and so we can talk about history. I think you can find out about somebody's history by just finding out about their current life. Oftentimes that's just as useful from my way of thinking about it. Um, the, the history can be helpful to kind of fortify your take on what's going on, but the current behavior and the current, the current living circumstances usually tell you all you need to know. And so if that's true, that, that we tend to recapitulate our early family environment in our current relationships, is that if we grew up in a neglectful environment, then it stands to reason that we probably have selected, even if unconsciously, current relationships that themselves are neglectful. And what do they neglect? Well, they probably neglect nurturing interaction. Active listening is the heart of nurturing interaction, and that is when we share what we, what's on our heart, that we have a partner or relatives or coworkers that honor that by listening to it before responding, that respond to the content that we've shared without overloading it with their own agendas, with their own uh, advice and so on. Uh, I mentioned in the previous uh, video that addiction may be seen as a poor foreign substitute for intimacy. Uh, intimacy, psychology, recently calls intimacy attachment. Attachment is a major motivator for all of us. And I've begun to see addiction as being part and parcel of what happens when our attachment relationships go awry. Hence the logic of approaching the treatment of substance abuse, not from just focusing surely on, on the substance itself, but also on what led to the use of the substance. And I believe the relational component is one significant feature. Thank you.